Robert Tellis, the former Clark County administrator who was now charged and found guilty with murdering Las Vegas Review Journal reporter Jeff German. Well, obviously guilty. Sentencing? Not exactly what we expected. Joining me to discuss, it is uh, Bob Mata, uh, host of the podcast Defense Diaries and defense attorney. Uh, Bob, honestly, this morning, uh, I know the jury came in late last night with their verdict, and I was the first thing I looked at this morning. I'm like, what was the what was the, the sentence? I read it wrong. I thought I because it was my eyes are glossy. I'm like, oh, life without the possibility of parole. No, not so much. Not so much. Not so much. Not so much. It was same. I woke up and and my buddy over at Law and Crime, Michael Bryant, was texting me. He's like, so after Law and Crime went off air, that uh, I guess one of the producers talked to a couple of the jurors, and apparently they were stuck. Two of the jurors were stuck on the hair picture. Oh, like geez. that. Like two two of the jurors that actually sold them that it, it wasn't him. That it, it that 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 person in that vehicle had hair to the extent where it sounds like it was a compromised verdict, uh, which bared itself out in the sense that at sentencing they gave him uh, 20, 20 years to life. So that means that after his 20th year he can actually apply for parole so in theory he could be out in 20 years oh my god isn't that crazy it's crazy for this, this a brutal just, homicide like that this thing proves exactly you know what what you always say what i'm always saying is there is no such thing as a slam dunk case this one there really isn't. felt like it would have been but literally the idiot putting on a wig somehow made some jurors think it it wasn't him i mean i mean uh, god unbelievable it is unbelievable like with dna under the fingernails the shoe cut up in the house the hat the bag it's like uh, yeah i I, I, we say it all the time man you never know what a jury's gonna do you just never know i feel bad for anybody in those two jurors lives (laughs) because because I'm guessing these are people who don't make the best of decisions in general. I mean, man, that's if, like if, if yeah. you're buying that, these are the folks who are buying like the uh, the stamps and the coins and the plates late at night on television, thinking there's some <laughs> sort of commemorative like uh, thing that will be there forever. And in reality, their kids are just going to throw them away the moment they die. Um, <laughs> that's, just, that's the type so of wait, person. You're I'm saying thinking. my collector plates are going to get tossed. I'm sorry. As as I- that's a way. That's I, a bummer. I, I'm sorry, Bob. They're just they're not collectible. <laughs> they're not. They're for you. I'm glad they make you feel good that you they have uh, you know all of the presidents and an eagle, you know, eating uh, you know flags and <laughs> fireworks going off in the background and the twin towers and you know everything. America, America. America. And it just says yeah, America right. right across. I'm sorry, <laughs> they're not worth anything. I know you spent <laughs> ten easy payments of twenty nine ninety nine. But um, yeah, I consider you a true friend for for breaking that news to me. So thank you for that. Hey, sometimes you just got to hear reality. <laughs> hey, man, got to rip that bandaid off, dude, at some point. But my God, I mean, this this couldn't I still don't understand his theory. I, I don't the, the conspiracy theory. I really don't quite grasp how it all works. Did you ever get a full grasp on, on what he was meaning by the 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 realty firm wanting to frame him and to kill Jeff Gerben. I mean, it it just it, it it always it didn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, and I mean, part of the problem for him was that, uh, as you know, I can't remember if we recorded before or after he did his narrative, <laughs> his narrative direct, where yeah. his lawyer did not question him. Mm-hmm. Like he was just able to get on the stand and and tell a story. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, like that's obviously something that happens all the time when you have a pro se defendant, somebody who's representing themselves. It's not not quite as frequent when you have a lawyer, but what that tells you is that his lawyer communicated to the court like with without saying it. Like you you can't you can't destroy privilege by going up and telling the judge, oh, well, my client's about to get on the stand and lie. <laughs> But, um, you know, it it was definitely communicated to the judge that, look, I'm in a position where there's certain questions that I cannot ask my client. Um, 
And if you're going to force me to do that, I'm going to have to make a like emotional withdrawal, mm-hmm. which it's a mistrial or, you know, cause I think you're going to have to grant it. So ultimately, you know, I think they were that deep into the trial. They ultimately said, all right. And the state was like, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, in the, the state's going to be like, this guy's going to sit up there and talk for an hour and a half. That's awesome. Yes. Uh, you know, we'll give him as much rope as he wants to take to hang himself. And so that thing goes down. And, and from what I gather, the, the overarching concept is that uh, like when he's in office, he's got this kind of this beef going with Compass Mortgage, wherein uh, he, he realizes that their Compass is pulling some shady stuff with respect to the properties. Because ba- a PA, ba- basically, if somebody dies in test state, meaning without a will, property goes into the hands of the state unless somebody else in the family wants to, you know, handle the estate. Uh-huh. So in those situations, it sounded like compass was, was getting their hands on some of these properties and that they were buying them for undervalue and then turning around sometimes in the same day and selling them for a profit mm-hmm. far above what they bought it for, you know, 50, $60,000. And then he caught him doing this multiple times. He said to like the tune of like six million bucks, which to Compass Mortgage, which is a you know a billion dollar net worth corporation, mm-hmm. um, wouldn't be anything. It's a drop in the bucket. And they'd write it off as like the loss is bad debt or what, whatever, yeah. whatever the case may be. Even though it wasn't a loss, so at some point, Teus's story or Telus's story is like, look. Like they, they, the woman that's running against me in the, in the election, uh, I found out that Compass had donated to her campaign, contributed to her campaign. Okay. So they're basically trying to say, all right, we want this guy out. So that's when it starts to become evident to him that Compass Mortgage really has it out for him. And then, then when the stories come out, like in, in, in his theory, I think that it was that Compass was providing, Garmin with information. All right. So it, it then becomes this thing where <laughs> Compass Mortgage hires a hitman or an assassin to go and frame up Telus for the death of, of Garmin because they know that he will be the suspect because of all the stories that have come out and ruined his political career. So that. Uh, the the big gaping hole that I kept waiting for is like, okay. And apparently there was a cop that had worked for compass mortgage at one point. Okay. Okay. So that like, that's his link to that's how the cops get involved to framing him up. So it's like, you have the hitman hired by compass mortgage and then this, this, I'm assuming a realtor with Compass Mortgage, who was formerly a cop or was still a cop, somehow talks some of his cop buddies into joining in on this frame up and like, look, hey, man, you need to look that way for one second. I'm going to tuck these uh, this cut up shoe under this chair here. It, you know, so look, man, I can't make any sense of it either. But from what I gathered from the story and again, because his lawyer wasn't the one really putting forth this theory. Yeah. That's all we're ever going to get. We're sure. going to get that weird, incomplete story because his lawyer, frankly, just leaned into reasonable doubt. He yeah. Was just trying to kind of pick apart. Why, but why would they go after when you, why would they care about Tellus? And if he's out of going to be out of office, he has nothing to do with anything anymore. That's so, what, that's what Hamner's argument, like a uh, prosecutor Hamner, who I love, like he, yeah. he's, he, he looks exactly like Rob Schneider. I can't like every, I'm sitting there looking at him like it's, I, I call him Rob Schneider cuter, but, but I love him, man. He's yeah. like a really like just a straight talking. He, he actually reminds me a lot of a defense attorney more than kind of a buttoned up prosecutor. Yeah. He's just, just that kind of guy. And that that's what he's saying. He's like, why? He's like, why in the world you were a lame duck candidate? Like, like why? Like you were out. Yeah. They had already won. They had contributed to to your opponent's campaign. She won the election. You're done in like three months. They like, what do they care? Yeah, you're, you're out of their lives. 
you know, and, and they obviously don't really have, he didn't have an answer for that, you know? So it's like the and, concept and, of yeah. it is, is, and, and he know. somehow twisted the, the hitman that the hitman would want to draw attention to themselves if they were trying, if he was trying to frame someone. <laughs> hey, listen, listen. <laughs> like in any case, a hitman's not going to try and draw attention like, to themselves. You know, like, all right. So like that part of it, when, when, and that came out during cross, when, when Hamner was crossing him and he said, he's like, so, so let me just get this straight. So what you're saying is that, that a professional hitman intentionally drove so that you, mm-hmm. So the vehicle would be seen on the video. Yeah. And, and Tayaz starts to spit it out, but he's like, yeah, my concept is that they're trying to frame me up. So they went and they bought the same vehicle that I own. So it then became very important for them to make sure that I'm seen on video. He's like, but wait a second. He's like, so they took all the effort. The assassin took all the effort to park a block or blocks away, walk over to the crime scene and then at some point they're like, oh man, I forgot something, or I gotta go back to the crime scene. They then drive back, but they have to make sure that the car is seen on video, the Tahoe seen on video. And he's like, Yes. He's like, look, if I'm a professional hitman and I am going to try to kill somebody, I'm not gonna pull up right in front of the house. Once the job was done, so like I have to come in surreptitiously. So if I'm the hitman, so I'm gonna park far away, I'm gonna walk over. So that I'm undetected, like as if somebody would know that that was Teus's car, that this person was a hitman if they parked on the street. Yeah. You know, but then it, and then I have to come back and make sure that they see it so that the frame up is perfected so that they know they have a hint, they have a clue of how to come after me and they'll have some evidence. So we're going to throw this evidence the bottom in the line house. is instead of yeah. just killing Teus or tell us. Yeah. And that was the first thing. Why would they kill Tellus if they they hated Tellus? You know, or or if they don't want the, any that's correction. what Hamner said. Yeah. Why why didn't they just kill you? Yeah. Like, why like, would why, you go after the reporter? Poor, poor poor Jeff Garman. Like what? Why why suck him into it? You know. So yeah. yeah, it's it's a it was a crazy case, and it seemed it's like you said it seemed like a foregone conclusion. And I always respect when a jury is going to go back and do their job and deliberate. I yeah. mean, that's what they're supposed to do. We, we shouldn't be cheering our long convictions, uh, you know, in terms of deliberations. Like, it's not the way the system's built. They're really supposed to go back there and challenge the evidence and, and have meaningful discussions, you, you know. And, and like we have all these cases where it's like, oh, well, that was that's a no brainer, <laughs> you know, like that. It, it, like, they'll be back in an hour. And like, I, I'm guilty of it myself. I said and the same thing. I'm like. I've been practicing forever, you know, not just about tell us, but like all kinds of cases. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's going to take, this is going to take forever. You know I mean? Like, yeah. or this is going to be as quick as day, you know, you know, but I'm always leaning toward hung juries. I'm like, yeah. oh, they're going to be hung. <laughs> they're they're going to be hung on it. Not in this case. I did not think they were going to be hung on this case. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a surprising result uh, a lot in a lot of ways. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts and especially Apple podcasts where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there. Also be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most. We're on TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. Just search Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi and you'll find us right there. Again, thanks for watching.